I want to periodically identify the members of the Lavender Mafia and offer a short profile on each of them. I'll kick this intermittent series off on a high profile member of the Lavender Mafia today. No, it's not Cardinal Supich of Chicago, who I'm not even sure is technically part of the Lavender Mafia, as it existed from the 1960s to the conclave that elected Francis to the papacy and today, given Supich's age and relative short tenure in the College of Cardinals. I'll be kicking this off by focusing on Cardinal Francesco Paul Coco Palmero, aka Cardinal Coco Puffs. Why do I speak so disparagingly of a prince of the church in this way? Let's just get to the most heinous story about, car about the cardinal out of the way, then move on to a short bio of the man. LifeSite News reporting on October 10th of 2018. Source, Vatican Cardinal was at drug-fueled homosexual, homosexual party, and Pope knows it. Cardinal Francesco Coco Palmero, a close collaborator of Pope Francis, was present at the homosexual drug-fueled orgy raided by the Vatican police in the summer of 2017 at which his secretary, Monsignor Luigi Caposi, was arrested. A highly placed Vatican source with direct knowledge, who must remain anonymous for fear of reprisal, that's telling, tells LifeSite that the Pope himself knows of Coco Palmiero's presence at the party. Fear of reprisal and knows for a fact that the Pope knows about this. Let's continue. The party took place in an apartment in the building of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. That's the old Holy Office, and that's the office of the Inquisition in better times. Coco Palmiero was head of the Pontifical Council for Legislative Texts until his retirement in April. The same Vatican source spoke in more depth in a private meeting this summer with a group of priests, three of whom spoke to LifeSite about it. One of these priests told LifeSite that, according to the Vatican source, Cardinal Coco Puffs, 80, was not only an attendee. The source said, in fact, that he was presiding over it when the Vatican gendarmes broke in, and that they instructed him to abs absent himself before they started making arrests, according to the priest. Presiding is an interesting word, and we'll go get back to that. Another priest who was at the private meeting said the Vatican source stated clearly to me and a number of others that when the police raided the apartment and arrested Capozzi, Cardinal Coco Puffs was actually present at the orgy. He was then told by the police to leave immediately. The priest added that the, that the source gave us to understand that Coco Palmero is a practicing homosexual. A third priest told LifeSite that he heard in an informal conversation in the presence of other priests from a high-ranking cleric within the Roman Curia that at the reported homosexual orgy, said Cardinal was present and quickly whisked away by the Vatican police. So we have multiple sources here confirming this in one article. As LifeSite News reported earlier, Pope Francis himself insisted that Monsignor Capozzi be given that apartment in the CDF building, instead of the secretary of the then prefect for the CDF, Cardinal Gerhard Mueller. Coco Palmero has spoken in the past about the positive realities that can be found in homosexual relationships, and we'll get to that too. Prior to working in the Vatican, he was an auxiliary bishop of Milan under Cardinal Carlo Martini. He, was in a two, he said in a 2014 interview with Ross per whatever, if I meet a homosexual couple, I notice immediately that their relationship is illicit. The doctrine says this, which I affirm with absolute certainty. However, if I stop at the doctrine, I don't look any more at the persons. But if I see that the persons truly love each other, do acts of charity to those in need, for example, then I can say that, although the relationship remains illicit, positive elements also emerge in the two persons. Instead of closing our eyes to such positive realities, I emphasize them. It is to be objective and objective, rec objectively recognize the positive parts of certain relationships of itself illicit. Yeah, I'll bet that's your position if you're an active homosexual. We'll get back to that quote again later. The Cardinal's reduction of moral truth to a vague notional status, an ideal, with no necessary bearing on conduct, is the same as Pope Francis's approach in his post-synodal exhortation Amoris Laetitia. Accordingly, Coco Palmero is a strong supporter of Amoris Laetitia. He wrote a booklet titled The Eighth Chapter of the post Synodal of Apostolic Exhortation of Amoris Laetitia, praising the more lenient attitude toward remarried divorcees. Holy Communion insisted the cardinal must be given to them. The word orgy is an interesting word because it is synonymous with chaos. You don't preside over chaos unless you're the devil, and presiding over an orgy is typically done only in occult rituals. I'm hoping that the reports from the authorities who said he was presiding over the orgy was simply a poor choice of words, though it does have echoes of the book Windswept House by Malachi Martin, in which that author said that there was a satanic cabal in the Vatican, 
focused on the office of the Cardinal Secretary of State, but that's a subject for another time. So who is Cardinal Coco Palmiero? Technically, Cardinal Coco Puffs is retired, having had his resignation accepted by Pope Francis in April 2018. He was first ordained in 1962 by the man who became Pope Paul VI. He was initially appointed to the position of President of the Pontifical Council for Legislative Texts under Pope Benedict XVI in 2007. There he served until his recent resignation. Palmiero was made an Auxiliary Bishop of Milan by Pope John Paul II in 1993. He has the reputation of being a voice on interreligious dialogue in the Italian Episcopal Conference, which essentially means that he's a big voice of working with Protestants and other schismatics, as well as other big religious groups in Europe, like, say, the Mohammedans. The issue of child sex abuse at the hands of priests is something the Cardinal has been dealing with since 2008, when, at the behest of, again, Benedict XVI, revision to procedures for handling clergy sex abuse and the applicable punishments of them were overseen by Coco Palmero. In 2014, he explained, We want to make this delicate material more accessible, more understandable, and easier for bishops to apply. Well, as we can see, the application of this by the bishops has been pretty poor unless it was designed to not work. Interestingly, the cardinal was involved in the lifting of the excommunications of the four bishops of the Society of St. Pius X, the SSPX, who were consecrated by Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre. Most notably in this is that Cardinal Coco Puffs made no mention of one of those bishops, Bishop Williamson, as who is an avowed Holocaust denier. Although I don't understand why this caused controversy in the at all, since having controversial or even offensive opinions about non-dogmatic issues is not something normally a consideration for the illicitness of an excommunication. But again, this is a that was a controversy uh, stoked by the secular media and by the sort of left-wing Catholic media, the secularized Catholic media. In 2010, Benedict XVI appointed him to the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith for five years, which those terms are renewable. 2012 was a huge year for Cardinal Coco Puffs when he was appointed to the following Vatican offices. In, April, uh, in the 21st of April 2012, Cardinal Coco Palmero was, was promoted to full membership for the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. Later that year, he was, he was appointed to the Apostolic Signatura, the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity, and finally to membership in the Congregation for the Causes of Saints. Remember how all of the saints, or all of the popes that have been canonized in the post-conciliar era were canonized by Pope Francis. His elevation to these posts was done by Benedict XVI. In the 2013 conclave, he was actually declared to be Papa Bill, that is, a contender for the papacy. He actually received more votes initially than any other Italian cardinal. True to his nature as a likely sodomite, his role in attacking the sanctity of marriage has been undeniable. He was appointed by Pope Francis to the supposed reform of the annulment process. In the first synod on the undermining of the family, Cardinal Coco Palmero was quoted as saying that he expected more than what was done, which already streamlined the annulment process. Again, let's quote him. Let me say that I felt very much involved in the Pope's concern for responding to the expectations of many people who are suffering through problems connected to their relationships. This concern was certainly reflected in the work of the Synod, in the way that widespread sensitivity to these problems emerged. Still, I personally expected more from those who showed that they simply wanted to reaffirm the doctrine. We have both doctrine and people to consider. Let's consider a very problematic topic, extremely current, the topic of homosexual couples. If I meet a same-sex couple, I observe right away that their relationship is illicit. That is what the doctrine says, and I reaffirm that with absolute certainty. Nevertheless, if I stop at doctrine, I don't see what the problem is anymore. But if I observe that two people really do love each other, say they practice charity towards the needy, then I can also say that while the relation remains illicit, in those two people there emerge positive elements. Instead of closing my eyes to the positive aspects, I want to underline them. It's a matter of being objective and recognizing, objectively, the positive points in a given relationship that is illicit in itself. There are so many problems with this statement. The undermining of doctrine and dogma by the Lavender Mafia and other modernists is always done in the name of charity towards others. The citing of positive aspects of relationships that lead people to hell unequivocally is deeply disturbing, but not terribly surprising for someone who is himself likely an active sodomite. It's telling that in one interview I read, which you can find on my sources page, linked below, 
that the Cardinal was focusing on the issue of changing the church's practice towards those living the Bay Area lifestyle since 2013, the very year that Francis ascended to the papacy. Worst, at that same synod, he endorsed the idea of people in irregular marriages, meaning adulterous or probably even same sex, receiving the Holy Eucharist, despite sacred scripture being very clear on only receiving the sacrament worthily. So, what do we know about him? We know that even after the news broke about the drug-fueled orgy in the Vatican, Pope Francis remained silent on the issue, just like he has on the Dubia and on Vigano. The story broke in 2017 and has cropped up from time to time because it is so outrageous on a number of levels, including on the level of basic criminality. Monsignor Capozzi was arrested for the use of exotic drugs that carry heavy sentences across the EU, and it was apparently not the first time he was arrested for such behavior, yet we get nothing from the Vatican in terms of real sanctions on the highest ranking prelate there, Cardinal Cocoa Puffs. Again, this is only the first installment on providing brief biographies on the members of the Lavender Mafia. If you have a suggestion for who I should profile next, leave a comment below. If you like videos like this, like and share this video and subscribe, and click that notification bell below. You can support my work if you want to through Patreon. A link is found in the description below, along with links to my Twitter, the blog, and the Facebook page I manage. For Return to Tradition, I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.